Good morning everyone, Trackman44 here. Part 3, we're going to make part 3 real short and sweet. Um, all we're really going to do is kind of look at a duck calculator and kind of get a rough idea of, of what we do when we figure dust, uh, duck velocities uh, and duck uh, volume, uh, CFM, cubic feet of air per minute, and uh, duck velocities, the speed at which we want that air to travel down the duck to make it to where it's livable in the space. Uh, you have too much velocity, too high of a rate of speed, uh, there's just too much blur noise, too much noise in the house, and uh, you just can't hardly enjoy television or conversation with your friends and stuff. So uh, that's what we're going to do. It's just going to be short and sweet, and then we'll run back to shop here, and we're going to make a uh, we're going to make the uh, supply uh, supply tea right off the end of the furnace. Now this is a tool that's a must-have in anybody's uh, in anybody's toolbox that goes about the business of trying to install their uh, their systems. This is a, a commercial air duct calculator. It's from the train. I believe it is train service center. I've been using this particular calculator for probably 35 years or so. At any rate, if you just if you know what your system's uh, CFM delivery is, like I said, this one's two ton. Uh, so we we have our air our air volume in CFM, and we know what velocity we want to maintain. All we do is just slide this around until you know our air volume in CFM meets the velocity that we want to make, and we look down on this chart down here. If you look. It says rectangular duct dimension, and then I typically like eight or eight inch or ten inch high by whatever width. So you just look down here and decide, determine what uh, what size duct is required to deliver the quantity of air up here. It's just simple as can be. You can also go over here and use a round round spiral adapter. Uh, this also shows you your your friction loss per uh, per foot of duct um, at a particular CFM, which is good information to have. You know, as long as you, allows you to maintain the uh, your system in the within the design parameters. Just double check all your fittings, so to speak. But at any rate, I'm not going to go into detail on that. I just thought I'd show you a neat little calculator and uh, something I've used for for decades. On a quick side note, when's the last time you've been in, a, in an attic with this much uh, with this much lighting? I told my uh, my son. I said, uh, you know, worked with an old pipe fitter one time. He told me, he said, boy, you make your own conditions on a job site. And I learned a long time ago, when you're in a dark, dingy, nasty place, uh, you make your own conditions. You make it to where it's comfortable to do the work that you want to do. Even though it takes a few minutes to get everything set up and started, it makes the job so much better, and you actually get done quicker in the long run. I just thought I'd show you how nice and it is up here in this particular attic. So at any rate, we're back in the shop, uh, getting ready to, to lay out and fabricate the metal that we just measured up. Uh, hope it didn't bore you too much with all that silly talk and everything about duck velocities, duck sizes, and their correlation. But uh, the fact remains, heat pumps always get a bad rap, or seemingly always get a bad rap, especially air-to-air -air heat pumps, uh, simply because the, the discharge air temperature fluctuates tremendously with an air-to-air -air heat pump. The warmer it is outside, the warmer you're going to have discharge air temperature. The colder it is outside, the cooler the discharge air. Uh, and then, of course, it has to kick in your stages of electric resistance heat as the outdoor temperature gets below the balance point at the house, the balance point being the point at which the heat pump can no longer deliver enough heat from the outside air to satisfy the temperatures within your structure. But like I say, they get a bad rap primarily because of duct sizing and air velocities or air speed in the trunk line. Uh, and we're going to try to minimize that particular effort uh, on this on this job. I'm going to show you the, uh, the very first fitting that's going to go off of that air handler because we do have to divert uh, different quantities of airflow um, to either direction because the system is going to be reasonably unbalanced. We only have two registers coming off of one end of the system, and then the other one is going to have five. It's just going to be seven, seven registers, roughly 110 CFM. Well, a couple of them probably have 140, 150. A couple of them for bathrooms might only have 90 or so. Uh, but at any rate, we're only going to have seven registers to total 800 CFM. So let's take a look. I'll show you what we're going to make. Now, first off, I said we're going to have a reasonably unbalanced system. If you can, I don't really have dimensions drawn on this right here, but this is a much wider portion of the duct. If you look at center line, center line coming up here is way off to the side. So with this V in here, this notch, we're creating a pair of pants. If you look at a, a leg going this way and a leg going that way, and you look at the distance right here as to how, how the discharge of that blower, is, or blower discharge is going to be blowing into this, a smaller portion is going to want to go that direction as what's going to want to go this direction. And, uh, and if you notice, this is 13 by 13, which is the discharge opening size. We're going to maintain that simply because of how and where we're installing it. But immediately off of this right here, 
we're going to drop this to a two-way transition that's going to go by to the required 8 by 16 dimension to give us our footage per minute in a quantity of air we want to go that direction. As a matter of fact, that's a little bit smaller than what it should be, so our velocity is still going to be a little bit less than what it should be for air conditioning, uh, but not quite as low as what it should be for a heat pump. But it's, it's going to be uh, it's going to be okay. And then over here, we're going to drop immediately down to a, a, a two-way transition to where it's going to go down to a 9-inch wide by 8-inch in height. And that, too, is going to give us the velocity that we need to deliver roughly 250 CFM to that portion which is serving only a, a small bedroom. I'm going to go ahead and lay this out, and then uh, we're going to compare what we end up with to the picture and see if we come out pretty close. Now remember the lock farmer machine puts that Pittsburgh lock on it. Now all those notches that you saw on there, as we go down, there's a notch at like 10 inch, and then 6 and quarter, 5 and quarter, then 5 and 3 quarters more. Those will all bend in and out in order to, uh, to line up with our pair of pants or the, uh, the outside wrapper. There we go. Kind of looks like a picture. Now we've got to bend our drive tabs on the uh, on the discharge portions. You can see as the discharge of the air handler is going to come into here, the vast majority is going to go this direction, and a smaller percentage is going to go that way. Like I said, just two registers that way. Immediately, this is going to pinch down. Um, the velocity is actually going to slow just a little bit because it's going from 13 by 13 to two 13 by 13s but it's going to go back up to the immediate uh, footage per minute that's going to be required to send it down the ductwork as soon as I make the two-way transitions for opposing ends of this, uh, of this uh, pair of pants. So here's a completed fitting. Horizontal discharge into here. This is going to be our duct drive connection. This is going to be our S connection. So I've got the drive tabs bent on both, uh, on both discharges. So, um, and in the old days, if this were... Uh, before the, the advent of the Mylar coated bubble wrap, uh, we would physically have to make the duct two inches larger, one inch all the way around, to compensate for one inch fiberglass lining that you have to glue and rivet or spot weld to the inside of the, uh, the ductwork. Uh, if you don't allow for that, of course, then your ductwork becomes two inches smaller, <laughs> you know, an inch all the way around smaller, and that uh, doesn't make for, for a good, uh, good airflow. That changes your airflow. Plus, you got the chance of, of the very first uh, few days of it in operation, you get that fiber fiberglass stuff, you know, in your airstream. And so, um, and also the smell of the glues, if you don't let it totally cure and get that glue smell out before you install. We're ready to move on to the next one. So, without boring y'all anymore, um, I think this is going to be the end of part three. Uh, part four is going to be laying out that ductwork and all that stuff. So for now, this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.